Good morning and good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's session on building data science portfolio with the live demo. Thank you for taking time out and being here today. I would like to introduce today's presenter, Victor Basu. Victor will be demoing us today one of the portfolio he built, uh, built that helped him stand out among hiring managers. And not only that, the project he is going to explain and demo today has more than 400 stars on GitHub. While Victor has been on my LinkedIn network for some time now, and I have been seeing his post, uh, this portfolio that he is going to demo today really caught my eyes because it has a unique uh, way of demoing the engineering concepts, the modeling concepts, and the deployment concept. Victor is currently working as data scientist and is also a 2x Kaggle expert uh, in notebook and discussion category. You must definitely take a look at his Kaggle kernels and GitHub repo. So the way today I'm going to structure this particular talk is I'm going to take some five to 10 minutes to explain about data science portfolio, what are the components of data science portfolio, and then I will hand over to Victor for the live demo, and then we will have Q&A. You can ask questions on data science portfolio. You can ask questions on Victor's journey from learning to industry. Uh, you, it can be open discussion. Let's start with the data science portfolio. I promise I will not take more than five to 10 minutes and then I will hand it over to Victor for live demo. So let's get started. Now, before getting into the data science portfolio, right? I just want to put a disclaimer. And uh, basically, whatever we are going to talk today is not like a set in stone guideline. This is the only way to build your portfolio or it is the only way to uh, get into an industry. Everybody has their own unique path. And if you are comfortable and believe in your path, go ahead with that. This is just one way of doing it. You might be right. So take take your own uh, uh, take take your own learning and path and try to uh, uh, fit in this or try to follow yours if you are completely comfortable with it okay so now typically what is a data scientist core learning skill we learn mathematics some amount of mathematics linear algebra calculus uh, we kind of learn statistics, right? Statistics on detail level, we learn statistics. We get into programming. It can be Python or R. Then we go into the basics of machine learning and also like build models. Now, once we do this initial step, then we uh, think uh, where to specialize, right? We can either uh, go and uh, uh, specialize in deep learning or we can uh, stick on to time series modeling or some other uh, niche concept. So these are these are typically a data scientist core learning skill. There may be others as well. We have a lot of tools. We get familiar with tools. We may be familiar getting familiar with pandas for data preparation, or we can go into distributed uh, machine learning like Spark ML. So there are multiple uh, core learning skills. Why do we need a data science portfolio even after we learn these core skills, or we are going into an institute, or we are going into a uh, college where we are studying all these things? But what really a data science portfolio helps us is it may it like uh, when you when you go for a job application today, right? Uh, you may get un the the hiring manager may get hundred of resumes over there. Now all the resume typically has the skills because this is covered by most institutes. This is covered by most academics. Now data science portfolio helps you show how you have applied the skill, and you have built a portfolio that demonstrates your capability in using the skill. And also like deploying the particular portfolio, you're talking about various components. It can be the data engineering aspect of it. It can be your data analysis aspect of it. There are multiple things that comes into play. So you're telling that these are the tools I learned. These are the skills I learned. I basically have a project or portfolio that you can come in, question me on, and I can, I can explain it how I, how I have used this particular tools and skills that I have learned. It is basically your evidence that you have learned the skills, you have mastered it. And most of the hiring managers are typically going to, uh, in, the, in the first phase, it will be mostly like coding skill or competitive programming or whatever it is, right? But as you go to the next round, they'll be more asking about the work you have done. And these portfolio really help at that stage. Now, what is a data science portfolio? It can be Kaggle. It can be blogs and articles. You can you can go and spend time on Kaggle kernels. You can see other Kaggle kernels and learn from it. Uh, there are a lot of ways you can use Kaggle. There are a lot of interesting and good data set in Kaggle. You have blogs and articles that you can write. You have GitHub repos that you can build using your portfolio. And then you can put videos as well on what you have done. 
uh, and there are like unique projects that you can I'm going to talk more about the unique projects today and that's how like I came across Victor's profile as well and Victor is here to, today to demo it but these are something that you can do in your uh, data science portfolio and Hubbo Hall even if you are done that um, remember you have to socialize it you can have your portfolio you can have your video everything like sitting in a repo but it's not visible unless you don't socialize it. Remember, you are your brand and you are the ambassador of your brand. Nobody is going to come and brand you. If you don't socialize it, all your effort is not visible to others. There is, there is a uh, more possibility of your effort getting visibility where if you socialize it better. Your college or your manager or your insti institution is not going to sell you. You are going to sell yourself by uh, going into LinkedIn or going into other social media channel and telling, okay, this is the portfolio I have built. The more engagement, the more visibility you get on your, and, and it is not that in the first step you may succeed, right? It takes time to build your network. But these are all each and every socialize, uh, socialization that you do on and about your portfolio is a step towards it. You build your network as well and you build the right network of hiring managers or people who want to contribute and work along with you. So make sure you socialize. Socialize is you sell yourself and you are the only person you can sell, in the, sell yourself better, not others. The, the, the institutions you work for may come afterwards after you land a job they will tell okay uh, this particular student landed a job in xyz but during the phase where you're finding a job you are the best person to sell yourself i'm just repeating it again just to make sure so these are some examples that i want to show uh, how you can build a portfolio right now if you take typically what we do it kaggle as a credit default data set and we take the data set we prepare the data we build the model we show the output this this fine this is the normal flow right now, the thing is like the same data set, everybody has access to it. And if you see today's profile, loan default is, is kind of common across all the resume. But what you can do is you can go a step, step ahead and maybe collect more data. You can go to a uh, different website like census.gov or data.gov, take the unemployment data during the time frame where the credit default was there and see if you can correlate with it. Or you can go to retail inflation rate or consumer spending data set. See, typically what happens when the un unemployment rate goes high, your default goes high. That is a correlation. This is a known correlation. The second aspect is when retail inflation rate or consumer spending uh, is high, when a retail inflation rate is higher, right? That means you are spending more for your product. So you are not able to really uh, service your loan. That can be a reason. The second aspect is when the consumer spending is going, uh, going high, there is a positive correlation. And at that time, maybe the loan default is rest. So these are just examples. You can go to any data set and see how you can tie back. You can combine the data. You can build model. You can take, you can like get your output and make sure you tell story out of it. So the dark blue boxes are something like that you can add on. The blue boxes are typically what you do, right? You tell a story out of it. What can be the story? Be The story can be your data analysis cycle. Okay, these are the data and these are the variables that are contributing to a loan default, yes or no, right? You can tell story on uh, what are the different techniques you used and why did you select, it, select this particular technique? So make sure you complete it with the story. Just having this particular notebook in a GitHub, GitHub repo, uh, Nobody is going to go and check the code. But if you have a good README file over there, people are definitely going to check the README file and read about it. That, that, that's one way, right? Take simple stock prediction. I, I know like most of the people have stock prediction in the resume, right? And it's, it's stock prediction has a lot of uh, aspects of it. That is like real time streaming data coming always. You can do a lot of time series modeling. There are a lot of things that comes into play. At the same time, stock also has volatility which typically a time series model cannot capture and typically you go with a moving average or exponential moving average. Now in this case, what you can do is say you are taking comparing Apple stock or you're comparing a Google stock. You can also go to Twitter and pull all the Apple data. Right? And you can see the current events, uh, whether they are uh, like a positive event or negative. And what you can do is you can take all the Twitter data, you can run and 
uh, sentiment analysis, and then see like you can uh, combine it with your modeling process. Maybe it need, it can be a feature within your model, or it can be a post ad hoc rules which tells uh, how I can use this model along with my social media data about Apple or its competitors. Right? You can scrap data from different news website about Apple and extract entities out of it and try to combine it. So you can take any project that you have currently, but try to show your uh, show your experience more about okay you can access multiple data sources the data sources in real world the data might not come in a single csv file you may have some json aspect of it that will be real time streaming data the social media data is typically real time you can continuously go to twitter and pull data there are a lot of aspects that you can take care of and finally remember to tell the story this is the last slide uh, just make sure you have a clear documentation with the architecture of your project. So yeah, the previous one can be a simple architecture. Just make sure that you put it to tell what you have done. You are storing the data. You are, you are telling here that, okay, you are done the different data collection. You are done data preparation. You are also telling a story finally, right? Think end to end. Don't focus only on modeling part, right? You you can run all the algorithms that are available today. It can be your neural network. It can be XGBoost and everything. but think you can, can you can do the data analysis cycle in a more detailed manner and uh, put a put a kind of document telling what is the outcome you saw from the data analysis cycle right take to deployment uh, you can you deployment on a real time streaming pipeline right and uh, you more like think end to end when you define your data science portfolio make sure you understand why you choose this approach because if if i am a hiring manager the first question i asked okay this portfolio is good but why can't I use X, Y, Z? Why, why I have to use this particular approach, right? So make sure you evaluate multiple approach and be comfortable on why you chose the particular approach. Make sure, like, learn some domain aspect of it of the portfolio. I know domain is a difficult part to learn, but a lot of lot of documentation available on a particular domain, right? If you go to Google Scholar's website and search for a particular business process in a domain, you will see a lot of literature from where you can learn from, right? And um, finally, socializing. If you if unless you don't socialize it, not many people will know. Make sure you socialize what you have learned. Said that, like at this stage, I just want to hand it over to Victor Basu, who is going to talk about one of his portfolio and uh, is going to walk us through basically the details of the project, uh, how we did it step by step. Go ahead, Victor. Victor, I think you are mute. Muted. Victor, you are muted. Okay, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, you're audible now. So hello, everyone. I am Victor Basu, and I can do pretty much good coding in data science and machine learning. You can trust me on that. So yeah, today I would be sharing with you the game changer project that actually helped me to uh, get noticed and get me a job when there was actually very difficult for a, for a beginner or a, or a zero level experienced guy to get a job into the industrial field as a data scientist or as a machine learning engineer. So this project that I would be displaying was not supposed to be the server side architecture or for the real stock market prediction with AML. The actual name which I planned for this project was full stack development for real time stock market prediction with ML. So what went wrong and why, what did I do? Like how did I approach this problem? What were my limits? Let's go and see this. So first of all, it was the month of October. I was supposed to join an organization as a full-time machine learning engineer, but things didn't went way that it was supposed to be. You know that C virus is all over and certainly like some companies do prefer to have and just I mean, get laid. Some of the employees just get laid off. So I was one of them who could not continue my career. And there, from there, I started searching for a job. So when I started searching, after one month, it was completely clear to me that my current profile won't get me to anywhere. Like if this continues, no one is going to recruit me for sure. So I have to bring a game changer in the field so that I actually grab the attention. So 
things many things went into my mind like i have to bring up what what how should i approach this like like i have a kaggle profile i have published research paper at ieee and elsewhere but nothing was working like everyone is biased towards this two to three years of experienced guy three to four years of experienced guy every interview i am qualifying till the final round but when the time comes to give the offer letter they are like we have a better guy than you who has much better experience so definitely it struck my mind that no this can't continue i won't be getting a job like this i cannot continue my career in data science domain like this so i plan that i would be pulling the interest of a lot of recruiters through one of my project like i have to invest my time i have to invest my my energy and my mentality over a project that could actually be the game changer of this entire scene so the thing that come to my mind that i for to get into a industrial level you have to show yourself that you are capable for an industrial level like you cannot just pull up research papers that you have done you cannot just pull up your kaggle medals and kaggle profile you have to show them that you are capable for a industrial level through your industrial uh, compatible works so one thing was sure i would be using kafka as my basic architecture here why kafka kafka is not basically when you use to practice or you use your uh, to you use your skills uh, practice your skills over data science because mostly what you do is that you take a repository over a file or folder you take the uh, you read the files from there you make it through a machine learning model and the machine learning model predicts but what kafka does here is that it actually streams the logs in real time the thing that you are actually getting the entire data into your into your ram or into your memory at once kafka actually streams like this live stream actually what i am doing the same thing happens here at kafka also the live streaming actually happens so that's why this kafka and also there are other models also or other uh, like frameworks also that they use like for for if you are if the industry is more towards python they would basically prefer pyspark in case so yeah so the so here one thing was sure that i would be using kafka as the base architecture as the base like root of the architecture and over it i'm going to build some model so yes as i mentioned kafka is for industrial and let me show you the uh, like where can you get started with it or why can you know so this is basically the official website of kafka means you can means have a look at the video you can go through the tutorials also there are other tutorials at tutorial points also and other than that during my internship as i mentioned that that which i was supposed to join as a full time actually it was a internship uh, which as actually i supposed to turn into full time there also i faced this this kind of problems where the we were using kafka as the as the uh, means use kafka for streaming the logs so from there i i basically got familiar to this uh, to this uh, technology and i built built my model upon this so here your basic concept that well, like what are the topics like what are topics what are partitions of a topics what is broker uh, and what are the clusters over which you have to uh, you have to publish your brokers you can give it a read now the second obstacle my plan was to like train the model entirely with tensorflow js directly there was no mongodb in the beginning of the project my entire focus was kafka would take in the stream straight away get to the tensorflow like like it would stream in uh, i mean i mean uh, a live a live streaming or a live training of a machine learning model but it didn't went that way so i definitely had to go to change the architecture so now comes stock market prediction means what actually should be the main means main domain over which i can attach my ml architecture there were many projects uh, means many data set in my mind especially you cannot use like an iris data set to stream log it doesn't make any sense or any kind of other data sets one more thing that came into my mind was 
streaming of messages like i can have this data source as a lot of messages i can stream it into mongodb and then use it tensorflow js to like classify whether it the sentiment of the uh, of the of a user is positive or negative but there was like like those kinds of model over tensorflow js was already built so the nobility the nobility of my research or the nobility of my approach was getting crashed right at this point where i'm actually like not able to build the model by myself like it was a pre built model or a pre trained model that would actually classify the uh, like what kind of sentiment would it be so then the second thing then two things two projects came in or two domains came into my mind was stock market prediction and another was ddos attack with ai so this was one of the article that was also written by me like it here also the aspects were same basically here the you actually stream the the server logs i mean yeah it it uses data set but the data set mostly contains the server log and you actually detect the ddos attack like what kind of attack is it is it benign or is it malignant or like some kind of uh, uh some kind of other sql hacking or like uh, port map or like netbus what kind of attack is it actually doing so these two were in my mind then i was pretty much confused that what what should i proceed so if you see there the model architecture let me just load so the model architecture here was pretty simple and it was a simple classification but when when you listen to a time series problem it it is a bit challenging so the basic reason why i prefer stock market prediction over this approach of ddos attack was basically that the uh, the real time stock market prediction would be a time series problem and i specifically think that time series problems are a bit i mean difficult to handle than a classification problem and also like there was no not i mean i was i would not be able to show off my pre processing here if i would have chosen this model as the best uh, sorry as as the problem over over stock market prediction so here was the entire story why did i choose this stock market prediction as the as the model and i would discuss later why the full stack architecture turned into like only the server side architecture so basically we have built the pipelines of the log from the source topic and their topics are to be subscribed to the consumer to give it a real time experience actually there would be two pipelines one would be towards the mongodb and the other one would be towards the tensorflow js uh, we would study first the mongodb pipeline first and then the tensor the uh, model weight uh, loaded model weight for real time prediction so tensorflow js because i mean i could have chosen python as the base for uh, building the entire uh, structure but especially i chose tensorflow js because if you think about backend as in terms of full stack development you do have like react and uh, view.js and most most of the time you see that the backend is mostly built with this javascript and javascript is mostly fast compared to python and so that's why those were some of the main reasons why i choose like tensorflow js there are also other libraries that are present in uh, javascript that handles machine learning but tensorflow js because like most of you are familiar with tensorflow as a library for that you use for machine learning and deep learning so that definitely would uh, like take the interest of your of my viewers or my uh, of my connections also that yeah tensorflow js is something unique that that he or she could actually learn mongodb i have used for to update the database like uh, fetching the logs and then use it for training and then also storing the performance and the entire structure is actually built in node js so kafka is also as i said that it's available in different languages means what you actually need for your industrial purpose you can choose with respect to that and i have chosen here uh, means i have used node js as the entire server side architecture for deployment that's why i used uh, kafka node as the base library 
so let's start with the zookeeper service so from here on we would be digging deep into the model the entire structure so so as i said that kafka when you are using kafka there would be a producer and a consumer producer would take in the logs and consumer would uh, like pipeline those logs and distribute it but there are more to it i'm going to be very honest that it's not i so that you have a have a means have a basic understanding of what kafka is all about i'm just representing as a producer that would take in the uh, the data logs and the consumer would actually pipeline it to the required destination but actually there are more to it there are topics there are partitions uh, brokers zookeepers they all have their individual functions like how kafka actually handle this uh, these uh, uh, logs there are more theory to it you can have it a look so here let me just start this server uh, so sig uh, sig drive is actually means i am using this sig drive uh, which is actually gives you to run linux command over your uh, windows system so then that's nothing special i mean you can just uh, you can just see windows uh, bash or or the command prompt to use it or if you have a linux system that would be very great uh, i would say that you better have a linux system uh, rather than using this kind of uh, like other softwares uh so at first we would be starting the zookeeper service Okay, so it's starting. So I think the zookeeper has started. Now we would be starting the broker so uh, victor while this is going on maybe i can give a quick background on kafka right how it is used in the industry as well so yeah, yeah. if you see apache kafka see basically what happens like uh, most of the systems are tightly coupled if you want to interact with an system you can directly go and plug in the system directly but uh, in enterprise when we want to share data or we when want to decouple the system the source and the target right we typically use kafka as a streaming channel so kafka is a streaming platform where you have a set of producers and consumers so what you can do if i am a producer of data say i like sell data uh, related to stock market what i can do is i can take that uh, data put it in a kafka bus and anybody who has access to consume data from the topic can go and consume and take the data it's a good way of data sharing across enterprise or even uh, external parties can share data on kafka you can set security parameters where you tell okay only these consumers have access to it and they can go and get the data so what you are doing is here you are decoupling your uh, front end and back end your front when i say front end not in the literal web term so when you see here the front can be stock market right rather i go and directly attaching my stock market within the server side code i am completely decoupling it okay go ahead victor okay so basically here in the producer code i have imported this uh, kafka node as i mentioned and here actually this entire streaming or like uh, like the data that i am getting in uh, from the source is actually struck is actually means uh, put into uh, uh, i mean just i mean json format or like or like what is this called i'm forgetting uh, 
let's say json format i mean uh, i'm just forgetting this format actually called so actually so that it could be used for streaming and yeah this handle stop and actually uh, in this part of the code i'm actually pushing these logs to the topic kafka topic one so let me just show you the folder uh, sorry file server model train utils So in this create Kafka topic, like I have already created this topic, but once you run this code, it would automatically create the topic. Uh, you can use it to maintain the number of partition, number of replication factor. And the, so as I've said that I would be using two pipelines. One would be for the training and validation and the other would be used for loading the model weights. So for that, we have used Kafka topic too. And if you are uh, uh, having like a question of what is this config. So config is actually this configuration file which I have maintained separately. Actually, you should also, <coughs> you should maintain a separate config file as a best practice of coding or like to give a good practice of coding to make it call a production a production ready code and, and to modulate your or like or to organize your code in a better way. So you should actually uh, keep this in a separate file, not that you uh, you have this create topic and you would write, directly write the name as like stock market analysis here. You should keep a separate file for them. It's a good practice. It reflects your coding skills, how good you are at coding. And it also like means help you to grab the attention uh, more that how, how means how you are good at modulating on like, or like structuring your code. So like this, uh, it would be pushed to two topics, topic one and topic two. Topic two would be of no use right now. It would just like uh, like stream it to the uh, to the model weight section. So See the producer is actually, I mean, yeah, sending the logs and let's take you to the consumer side. Yeah, as you can see that the logs are actually being inserted. Uh, the date, time, close, volume, the logs are actually getting inserted in the database. From here, let me just show you. Uh, what is it? Yeah, db dot update db. Actually, here db is the instantiate database. To maintain the entire database structure, I have maintained a separate folder a file for that. So here it is the instantiate database folder. Again, as you can see. I've not made this config available here. I've maintained a separate config file to uh, to maintain this entire user password server database to maintain the well structure of the code. Also, one thing I would like to mention when you are actually presenting your script, you should actually document it well. Like documentation would be the main key to give you an extra coin or like uh, extra credit. It does matter means you can be good at very coding uh, means you can be very good at coding and you can write a code within like like a hundred line code within three to four lines. But if you document it like what it it documentation for me is like having a good handwriting means you can have a you can you may know the answer you may know the answer correctly you may write the answer correctly. But do you think that writing it with a bad handwriting would give a good good vibe to the examiner who is checking your answer obviously no so when you are actually documenting your code it gives you a good vibes about your coding skills that you actually have a good practice about how to code so like this uh, this entire database um, is the database is modular and uh, miss update database and this get info db a 
InfoDB actually is used to get the size of the database, the first three objects of the array, like what kind of data is actually getting stored. Okay, so let me show you. As you can see right now, the database is completely empty. The ML prediction, is it updating? Is completely, now I think it would update. Wait a second. Yeah, as you can see that the logs are actually updating in real time here in the database. Actually, ML prediction would be empty right now because uh, I think it would be empty because we are not actually, ML prediction 2 actually uh, would hold the, yes, it would be empty because it would hold the performance of your model or how it would be. So how many logs are actually fetched? Let me check, 67. So let's just wait for some time until then i would say a bit background about myself uh, so actually when i means lost my full-time opportunity it was not so easy time like you you have a lot of pressure over your head and you you think means means a lot of things flashbacks in front of your eyes that if you don't get the job i mean it, the family pressure also remains like you can literally feel the pressure the thick layer of pressure over your head so the first month I actually applied for jobs because I was pretty confident that I have an industrial experience as an internship as a machine learning engineer and I was working on a pretty good project and also I published research paper I have contributed to IEEE and Elsevier I have a make good profile at Kaggle and I was pretty much confident but after means the entire October spent, as you know that the uh, that the interview process is a bit uh, means it takes almost one month. That the first week it would take you to a written technical round. The second week they would call you for an verbal technical round. The third week they would go for an HR round and then make you wait for the offer letter. And yeah, it takes almost an entire month. So by the beginning of November or like mid of November, I would say a huge wave of rejection came to me. Like all of them were having the same reason that you don't have enough years of experience to to continue with us. So, I mean, yeah, it was means I means I was totally in abyss. It means what should I do? Like it's not working out. Like one thing I learned for sure: if this continues, I'm not going to get job anywhere. And the job portals are totally filled with, we need three to four years of experience. We need like more experienced guy. So actually, I mean, I had to like sh shot down a plan or like a strategy, a well strategy to actually uh, to get myself into the eyes of the recruiters to get myself viewed or get my to get the attention of the recruiters that I also have the potential. So I didn't want it to extend this, but I wanted to have do this project or like a or a, or like a like a game changer project within November and December, like mid of November and December, because total it would be three months and more than three months. I think the recruiters also like considered me as some job employment gap and my chances would also like lose as the employment gap increase increases like loss of employment gap increases so within these two months i have to like bring up a project and along with this i was actually actively interviewing i was actually taking part in technical round like within one week you are given two projects sometimes you have this technical round within two days like you have this, you have to give out your best. Means it's easy to say that, uh, like interviews would be easy. Just stay calm. What you know, just say it. But trust me, means when you are unemployed or you don't have the job, it it really uh, means it. There there is a lot of pressure over your head. Means you cannot give the interview the way you think you should. Like you like with every question you pass, like you you just take one step closer. Like I don't want to miss out this chance. I have to get it. 
and yeah the pressure remains a lot and means when when you just uh, give a wrong answer like you just you just fumble up the entire thing like like i might just lose this chance and like like it it doesn't goes well within that pressure so actually i was working on this project and the reason why i said that it was to be a full stack architecture uh, to which it turned down to server side architecture because i was actually working on the front end also like when i entered december like where november i was completed with this entire model thing but when i entered december i was actually working on the front end and as i mentioned that i was working with uh, CSS, uh, css html javascript and react.js to build the front end so that i can show myself as a full stack machine learning developer but things didn't didn't went that way uh, i uh, means i failed at building the front end like like i like we, uh, if you are a, a javascript developer you know that there are libraries like d3 also which helps you to give a better visualization of this entire thing but i could not like like complete it and like i was also learning at the same time the entire react js and the javascript in the front end so i actually have to omit it out and keep it only to the server side architecture not the full stack architecture also here i was i was having more of like pipelines to actually take in the twitter logs or like which would actually you could helps to help to like like to correlate with the stock market to give it a better result uh, but yeah i mean i could not like plan out the entire thing so i actually omitted those sections out of it because i means no matter how much i say that it was my my something that i was totally investing myself but somewhere i had this time limit of like 2 months within this 2 months i have to make this release like right? so a lot means these things got omitted up and on 23rd at 11:30 i let it 194 locks okay let's let's wait for 200 locks and then we would train the model so i have a question for you victor right like uh Uh, now, are you from a CS uh, computer science background or a non-computer science background? Yeah, yeah, I'm from computer science background. Okay, okay. So there's a question, right? Uh, so like uh, Deepesh has asked, how should a non-CSE student start with data science? So have you seen like some of your friends from non-CSE background entering, and what what additional step they are to take uh, before uh, knowing the CSE uh, side of it? See, I. Uh, if you like if you have visited kagel you would see their data science who are from civil engineers who are retired government service employees who are actually grandmaster at kagel so let me just make it very clear to you if they can invest the time they can have the motive to grow themselves into this data science domain why can't you like they are actually retired they were from different domain some of them were like international chess players like they didn't have intention of like coming to the data science domain like if they can they have this motive i want to grow myself into this domain why can't you you have to invest your time you have to search the internet you have to like like go for uh, go for hit and trials because you would fail i'm for sure i myself failed as a when i entered this domain let me make this clear like i restarted a lot of times Like no matter how much I publish research papers, how much I have a Kaggle profile, I restarted a lot of times in these domains. Like from clearing the basics, clearing the entire logical part, then the entire and uh, the the structure or the algorithm that are actually involved. What is the base root of this algorithm? I restarted a lot of time. You have to go for hit and trials. You have to fail. You have to learn from your experience. there is no other way like if i even say that okay go for linear regression go for basic statistics after that go for linear regression go for logistic regression would you really invest your time to actually uh, go entire statistics then logistic then linear obviously not you would you when when you are you took interest into this data science you would be familiar with ml and with other like data science uh, stuff that are been published 
you would have that that fire inside you okay when would i get into that stuff or when would i work with gan or deep learning you would have that fire and within that process you would actually skip some of the basic concept which it would be actually the root of your failure afterwards so you have to experiment yourself know your limits work on them repeat yourself revision is the best way or revising your concept is the best way to deep root or like or like to strengthen yourself in this in this domain there is no other way like there i i cannot explain like a fixed way of doing it and and i want to add with you right i am from electronics background so when when i uh, and and i know like i graduated a long back but i think the exposure today we have to a uh, computer science for a non computer is far better than what when i graduated from electronics because i had zero knowledge when i came out of the uh, college on any of the computer the only thing we were taught is basics at that time and basic yeah yeah, yeah. absolute right so uh so uh, i would say like um the the thing is today you have a lot of exposure you can start practicing python and other program and slowly get into uh, statistics linear algebra and graduate from that uh, so that that's a good way of getting entering the field getting going and one thing i uh, feel like if you are from uh, electronics background or something like that right a uh, lot of iot device and lot of your uh, machinery equipment uh which are electric electronic based have ai embedded in that today we are entering to embedded embedded ai space so both go well together as well so you can plan your career accordingly where ai fits in your industry and then move towards that as well did it complete uh... yeah yeah so we would be moving to the tensor projects uh, actually the logs are being updated here so what is this tensorflow js it's just tensorflow in javascript that's it nothing more to know about it like i won't like brag about it much it's just tensorflow in javascript so actually the main plus point here is uh, like they have this pre built models like let's see if it would so they have pre built models that could actually could use it for your own industries and and like integrate it with the front end the back end however you want it so uh, so that's that's all about these tensor projects and as i mentioned that javascript has its demand in the back end and also javascript is much more faster than python so definitely people would give more preference to javascript over over these python so let me just show you some glimpses how you can like if you are not actually familiar with tensorflow js how you can work so see tutorial see demos okay okay so here are various models image classification object detection you can pick any one of them view their code and just fork or like clone it and then use it to build your own architecture or your own front end and back end like pose estimation they all have their baseline model and there is also a reason why i didn't use any of them because i wanted as i mentioned i wanted to have a novelty over this tensor flow model so that i can uh, show that actually this model architecture is built over uh, over some uh, uh, over the basic construction or from the root or the Uh, or the baseline not only that if you have this model like it is the server side architecture so basically this tensor flow model this built tensor flow model would also be over the uh, architecture now if you have a model in python you would wrap it with js you have to upload it so here you don't have this tension of uploading it's already over the server if you want to modify the loss function if you want to modify the acute Uh, the accuracy or the layer parameters or hyper parameters it's all over the server you can do it over there you don't need to like wrap it and again upload so so it's it's a bit lengthy process to uh, i mean wrap the entire python code within uh, within a tensorflow uh, script and then you upload so it's already over the server it would automatically work from there so here is the tf model so tf model uh 
uh, here the model is actually created the basic layers that have been used you you might be familiar with this pattern in python also the same goes for tensorflow js also like like the basic difference with python and like javascript is how you are going to infer it with the uh, with your current architecture or your current business logic the basic borderline lies there like like the loss function is actually written in in different function and the same models parameters are the same and the fit model actually await we use await because uh, like uh, like in javascript you can use asynchronous uh, asynchronous processing like when you have a process like two processors are running in parallel so let's say one process would take more time and the other process would take less time so until the more time process completes the the process that would be the process b that would take less time would already start in parallel and the and it helps in like parallelizing your entire processing so that's why you have this await here and this process model is entirely the loading of layers the tf train so here we would be actually connecting to the mongodb client through the uh, so through the mongodb server and then loading the model and then actually we are using splitting this entire data set into this uh, I, uh, into this 80 to 20 percent for training and validation and we would be training these logs and the model weight would be saved over a given over a given folder or a given system so let's train our model so i have used gp uh, sorry cpu yeah, there is also another version for gpu also like tensorflow node gpu you can install it if you want to use uh, like gpu for your uh, for processing so actually as you can see that for each uh, batch the entire optimization is taking place and it would run for 50 so let's have some chat till then until it runs till 50 uh, so as I was telling that I had limited time in my hand till December and on December 23rd at 11.30 I actually launched a, my project over LinkedIn and I went to sleep. I was feeling way more tired like let's let's hand it over to the God what he will do. Let's see. Let's just toss the coin and see whether it's heads or tail. I went to sleep. I woke up at 4.30 and I was literally surprised. I mean, I had no words to express how I felt. A lot of leading data scientists actually appreciated my projects. I never imagined that people would actually know me for my work. Like, like I have seen over LinkedIn, people actually get noticed after they get into uh, Amazon or Microsoft or Google. But like like you would find them nowhere but once they get into the fan you like whatever they say is like yeah they are god but i had no job i had this bio in my linkedin i'm looking for opportunity like people actually like trusted me or like connected or like appreciated me for my work was a big thing for me like like i'm really blessed in this life to have this opportunity to like people would know me for my work actually like i had never had this feeling before like like i also received some critics like you you should have done this you should have used twitter logs and like i i feel very happy because people actually took time to click the link go to the github repository and actually check that that yes this boy has done something let's check it out and actually give him my opinion their opinion I was really very happy, like be it compliment, be it critics, like I'm, I was literally like miss have no, had no words right at that moment, like people were actually like knowing me for my work because it, it was like a huge roller coaster, like I was going to be a machine learning engineer from where I lost job to zero, like like literally like no one was 
willing to take me into their company because of my experience and they can rising to the roller coaster where everyone is like appreciating me for my work that yeah you have done really great job and it was really a bit emotional for me also like like getting noticed for your work actually in their domain so that's how this entire project become a game changer for me like it was like that joker card you pull off in a in a pack of in a match or of card game you just pull up the joker card and entire game changes something like that so yeah definitely i feel proud about this project and it's been a hard time when i was working on this thing like a lot of things were getting into my head work or not either everything would work out fine or not a lot of thing as i mentioned i have excluded from the project just because i it was incomplete because to me see when you are cooking a food you when you have a un, an a uncooked or a incomplete food you won't serve it to the customer rather you would have the completed cooked food and you would serve it to the customer so my mentality is something like that when you have this like the rice is actually well cooked but the dal or the fish is actually a bit a uh, non cooked or like it's not complete you better fill fetch the or like fetch the rice to your customer rather than like uh, also like only the rice to the customer rather than adding the uncooked fish or the uncooked uh, or the non cooked fish to your customer like i have this mentality that's how i work and yeah everything went well after that so our model what is saved here let's validate our model okay why did i change the screen no tf train so it would be validating so, yeah so as victor the, the thing is like uh, one thing when i saw that you are your yeah, linkedin post right really like the because i have been seeing lot of portfolios to be frank and um uh, people give less importance to the architecture and um uh, what do you call the the entire pipeline right mostly people give importance to the modeling part of it and that's where like this was completely different for me because you posted the architecture itself and it got me curious knowing okay it has kafka it has mongodb then you are training the model and then you are taking the trained model weights and deploying it it had everything and that's why like i brought up Uh, that thing right socialize unless if a victor has done it and kept it in his github repo not sure how many people would have really come and noticed it right it just gets lost uh, a bit within your knowledge so don't be shy away to take social media and display it there will be uh, there will be lot of people who may kind of have their own viewpoint that's fine at the end of the day you are put effort go ahead and socialize it right you will definitely get the visibility if your project has the uh, right ingredient over that yeah yeah definitely definitely so before i showed that the ml prediction was actually empty but now as you can see that it would be actually filled uh, see the prediction the real and the type that is open here i mean it could be closed and other types also the prediction the real the prediction the real actually it helps you to validate your model how your model is actually performing the pipeline here as i mentioned that 20% for validation 80% for training the 20% data here is validated and you can actually like observe your model how is it actually performing do you need to fine tune it do you need to add or remove layer so like this you can actually do now this train model weight would come to this stream and then the tensor flow uh, model weight would be loaded here and it would do a real time prediction so let's get directly into it so i think the producer is closed okay so let's start the producer yeah and we would give ml ml consumer actually ml consumer here is the splitting of the pipeline as you are seeing see closely watch this uh for every 
okay okay i think it's actually synchronizing with the logs uh, so it's synchronizing with his previous log after which he would be able to see the real uh, like real time prediction so for every like uh, like uh, seven uh, uh, six log it would predict the seventh log which would be a time series uh, time series prediction so here prediction is actually this 33.37 actually this entire streaming see here it is being streamed the producer and here the entire prediction is coming out in real time so he, as i have explained here the pipeline there's this another pipeline going here to the here it is the ml consumer that is taking on the pipeline here loading of model is taking place and the real time prediction is done and what is the real time prediction see for every fifth log you can see that the prediction is being done and after that again the streaming is taking place and after which the prediction would be done so let me just make you to the ml prediction <clears throat> so here it is the ml consumer part there is nothing special except you actually have this uh, have this like to uh, to uh, load the model from this uh, model architecture and then and then you use it for prediction nothing more special or specific to mention so here the entire cycle like this goes on and on this is the entire production cycle to deploy the ml model this kind similar to this i won't say this similar to this architecture you would also face in industries like if you were like if any viewer is from industry would definitely like know that there is an entire cycle that's involved while you are deploying a machine learning model over the production so like this the entire cycle would continue and also there is a parameter called visualize your data so you can use it to visualize the model performance like this and and that's all about my project that actually like like means turned out to be a game changer for me like really i mean i feel proud of about it so one thing i would say that don't only rely on uh kaggle notebooks or notebooks what recruiters actually look for is your i mean your coding style your coding skill as a whole you can have the skill to design a notebook with fancy br bracket with hash hash and then semicolon but this is also an art like documenting the notebook representing every configuration file in a separate file scale configuration in a separate file means training in a different file and maintaining your ml model in a different file this is also an art of coding that actually a recruiter or a or an interviewer actually looks for these styles so actually when you would apply means i have heard this from from like some interviews like companies like microsoft are actually highly biased to this to these kinds of things like you need to have one project in your profile but that project should be well well maintained well modulated well documented you have to have it like i don't know about other organizations but micro but companies like microsoft are highly strict about these kinds of thing and it would also help you in your future careers uh, like like i mean not only getting interviewed but also when you would be inside the organization the team that you would be working with they do not need to like make you understand you need to code like this like you can you can have it like yeah i know how would things go how to structure the entire thing how to structure my entire code for a project and that's all about me yeah victor let's uh, thank you victor for this amazing showcase of this demo right uh, i just want everybody to take an end to end view of this particular project right because it had all the ingredients uh, i think like we are more than an hour um, we are here let's take some questions uh, uh, quickly victor right like some of the questions let's do it a little fast so that we can cover most of the questions there are a lot of questions in fact 
So the a uh, lot of people have asked for GitHub repo again. This is a GitHub repo. You can search for GitHub Victor Basu, and once you go into that, you will find uh, this as the first uh, uh, project. You can click on that. Uh, I have just put it in. You can see it in the video now. So just use that. That is a GitHub repo. Uh, so there is one question that is asked: Can we add Spice Park to handle large amount of data? Maybe Victor, I can get started with it, and you can add on to it. So one good thing about Kafka, right? It supports a plain vanilla Python client as well as other streaming client as well. Now PySpark Py has PySpark Py Spark streaming or Spark streaming, where if you are having a lot of data, what you can do is in Kafka you can partition your uh, topics. So when you create a topic, you can say how many partitions you want, and it's a distributed streaming platform. So you can place your partitions across multiple system. So when you are pushing data, the data will get distributed in partitions. And when you are consuming data, you can create a consumer group with that many number of partitions and read parallelly. So yes, the same architecture can be extended to stream large amount of data. Victor, did I miss something you want to add on to it? No, no, it's exactly my answer would be the same here. Yeah. Okay, so. What was that protocol buffer format? Uh, Victor Boss, you want to answer that? Okay, so I think I think consumer when you are like uh, like you can tune this parameter with respect to the uh, to the server or like the number of data that would be fetched, and you can like like uh, set offset or like. Uh, to, uh, with with respect to your system or with respect to the cluster, like right? right now, my cluster is my actually the RAM that I am uh, that that has been allocated over the cloud. Your cluster would be the uh, the cluster that and that actually over uh, the memory space over which you would be establishing the broker. So actually, you need to like tune this parameter. Like it, it means it would automatically shut down when, uh, when this, uh, when this memory would be full, uh, filled up. Uh, so yeah, like this, you can, like manipulate it and then solve this problem. It won't be an issue. It's it's a, it's a thing of parameter tuning or something like that. All right. When you have to know this functionality of this parameter and then tune it with respect to your need and then. You can just keep it going. Good. So uh, yeah. So the, this was this was like actually great one uh, from you. P people really like the content, uh, Victor. What you have shown, right? And it's very good for data science aspirants. I saw some other questions. Your local system and gave replication factor as three for the topic. How is it going to handle internally? Uh, maybe why about like uh, on a distributed system when you give three replication factor it does it on a local system it's going to take the number of brokers maybe if Victor Basu has created three brokers when he uh, started Kafka in the local system it's going to use that uh, the, is that what you have done Victor Basu yeah 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 Definitely. okay okay actually replication uh, factor also helps you to like like when you are streaming the messages all right. So loss of message also is a is a part of this entire streaming process. Like, like message one, two, three, four, and the fifth message won't be like like transmitted. So when you have this replication factor, it actually helps to handle that loss of message, and this uh, yeah entire streaming is actually make, makes it smooth. Got it. So. What further benefits would a front-end architecture React provide? Uh, go ahead, Ms. Uh, actually, uh, benefits I would uh, I can say in specific. I was just like going for something like like this entire thing is in is in React. Uh, sorry, is in Node.js. So maybe I can just uh, like connect it to the front-end or the client side. Like this is the server side. The front-end would be the client side. So connect to it the client side with React or like C simple CSS HTML and JavaScript and and React. I don't think there would be specific advantage. I think I think if you are a web developer like or 
or if you ask this question to a web developer he would be uh, in a better position to answer this because i was still researching and studying our react till then means i was not familiar with react before to be honest mm -hmm. like i was still researching on it mm -hmm. So wasn't this asking how and where I can learn ML ops? Uh, wasn't like uh, uh, you can you can actually go in any cloud <laughs> provider or on-prem provider documentation. There are a lot of documents on ML ops. If you if you want to kind of uh, learn model deployment, model monitoring, or the entire end-to-end -end, uh, machine learning lifecycle, you can go into my uh, YouTube. Also, I have a course called End-to-End -end ML and Model Deployment. Again, it's completely free. You can you can go and check it out. It has all detailed coverage. So I will take some questions like which is relevant to Victor and this one. Uh, but you can go and check it out in my uh, YouTube channel. Um, do you have any mentor or role model, Victor? Right. Uh, mentor. Or role, role model. Role model. I don't. I see myself to be like exceeding my limits every time. Like I don't compare myself to other. Like, like I think myself I can be a better version of myself. Like this, I and as of a role model. See, I, I, I'm a person who is based on like philosophy and all these stuff. Okay, I mean, I mean, philosophically, um, like, like philosophically to build up my mentality and to understand a bigger perspective of life and to tackle situation. Like, as I said, I'm not that guy who would work 24-7 for uh, to complete a job rather I would prefer half an hour to build up a strategy and go for that like I, I won't suggest like anyone to be a hard worker better be a good strategist better I think, be a I think Victor, the question is more like do you follow anybody uh, in the data science space you may want to call out quickly right just just uh, quickly it's more like data I, science space uh, yeah, okay. I think more towards that because it's the question is more toward data science. Right? Do you follow somebody in data science space uh, whose work you have liked and you have taken that as inspiration? I think it's a question. Yeah, I would say I would say there uh, the I think the first Kaggle Grandmaster, which was Abhishek Thakur. I do like follow his perspective. I like his perspective of coding and how he how he like visualizes or like like make things uh, to you like like some misuse uh, i've seen a lot of people make data science to be like entirely machine learning data science keep to machine learning nothing about it but from him i have seen that no it's more than that like uh, like you know, like more to the statistical parts also and that's all about it like the entire like like how you should code actually uh, rather than uh, you can have a very big good uh, depth knowledge in machine learning or uh, deploying it over the server or like a or like a industrial side side i mean i mean knowledge but you might not have the knowledge how to code or how to write a good code or some basic aspects you might just miss it so definitely i look forward to him Got it. Got it. So, uh, Victor, I'm sorry that we have to really uh, rush fast in the future questions so that we can cover as much questions as possible. So, just a high level thing, right? Because already we are close to an hour and a half. Okay. And this is a, a message for you, Victor, right? I love your attitude, Victor. You're motivating me a lot. And thanks for that again. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the amazing presentation, Victor, right? So, in ML, so many libraries are packages are there. It makes confuse which we need to learn, what you stay about it. Um, uh, quickly, Victor, if you can summarize it in as short as possible. Yeah, part. sure, sure, sure. Uh, actually, ML libraries, actually, you should go for no one. Don't go for any ML libraries. You think you want to go for a model, you want to learn a, an, an architecture like a random forest or a logistic regression, build it through your own self or there are uh, like uh, like i mean repositories that actually or or blog that helps you to build the models from scratch build them from scratch have the depth of the knowledge after that you can shift to any of it you won't be having any problem like you don't need to select or 
or like you, there is uh, something specific build the model from the scratch then shift to something like it won't matter much like all of them at a very base level are the same all right i mean there is not much of a difference like you might be comfortable with one and not comfortable with the other but that's a fact that's with everyone like there is no person who would say i'm comfortable with both pytorch and tensorflow choices would be there so do you, you don't need to tension about it got it and i would say like uh, uh, start with implementing some algorithms the basic once you understand the math of it right then you can move to ml libraries if you are python take python based if you want r take r based pick the language that you are comfortable with and then go for libraries uh, which are there which are pretty prominent pandas numpy scikit learn and even like distributed computing like spark or tensorflow uh, you can you can pick per your choice uh, right is one good next question to mari is one good big project good or different projects in different domain can we use popular data sets to create a uh, popular do projects or scrap see it all uh, depends i would say right you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. can focus on one very good project but also show it's like yeah, they say right you have to have an horizontal capability and a vertical capability your horizontal capability can be your uh, the one good project now you want to show differentiation okay you know nlp you know image classification or whatever it is then you can focus on those projects right any project you build or how many our project over depending on your time sometimes it's very time consuming because building like the one victor showed you takes lot of time it takes lot of research it's not like just uh, fitting everything together and it's up and running right taking kafka learning kafka is activity uh, getting into mongo db learning it is activity tensorflow js is activity all this takes time so it all depends on your time is what i would say you want to add to that victor no 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 i have the same answer as well mm. can you share the resources like github repo it's already shared i will put it it's in the comment as well yeah and you can search for victor basu github i have shared it multiple times uh you will get to the first search will land over there okay so again great work victor uh, motivating thank you. thank you thank you victor again how can we use this project to uh, just a minute how can we use this project to project a best range to buy and sell for a particular stock go ahead victor uh, so actually you can add another pipeline here as i mentioned and actually you can take the twitter uh, twitter logs or different types of scrapping over uh, let's say uh, stock market price would go up or down like in uh, i mean this was from one of the critics that i have received about this project and i learned from that that like actually you have to take another pipeline use the data source as the same but this time the data source the producer would be uh, would be from a scrapping of a website or scrapping of tweets build it till that the same thing would be done through mongodb and the model that you have actually developed there would be a secondary Uh, a, a secondary model or architecture that would actually help to you to correlate like uh, correlate within the stock would go up or down and then correlate with respect to the tweets and then give it a final prediction so like that like this you can approach and and have a better way for prediction good and i would like to add on to one thing right like typically take uh, a real world uh, uh, investment banking or any kind of portfolio management how ai ml is applied now you have an industry specific mutual fund for example you have uh, when you talk about mutual fund it's a portfolio of stocks and say the mutual fund is catering to uh, a steel industry now the steel stock prices may be dependent on the commodity price of the steel now steel price goes up and down in the commodity market and the company stock may be dependent on that or a company may be using raw material steel as a raw material to build products you can go into the commodity market uh, again they also supply real time data on how the commodity price is moving and you can correlate that as well if you are looking for any like steel kind of stock so there are lot of sectors that depend on other sectors or other uh, raw materials so you can you can analyze it and you can correlate that as well that is one option 
I think there's one question, Victor, like where are you pulling uh, the real time stock data from? I think in this case, it was like a file that you are getting it from, but you, but you add on to it uh, in uh, the example that you show where is the stock data coming from? Yeah, yeah sure. Actually, here, here in the data set, I have added like uh, two fold, uh, two files about the stock data, but let me show you the entire uh, data set. So here, as you can see, this person has actually scrapped this data set from Yahoo Finance. Let me, will it open it? Yeah. So actually this person has used this Y Finance Python package to scrap data from here and then uh, save it. Like you can like do it from, <clears throat> do it from scratch also like using this library called why finance let me open it up for you and then scrap it and then uh, use use it for like cryptocurrency all types of data are available here uh, yeah this is the package that he has used yahoo finance marketing uh, data downloader so like this you can have the data uh, like as you can see all types of data are being uh, pulled here and you can use it for your model uh, scrap it then load it and then use it to train. So that's it. That's that, that's the yeah. source. And and if you take like for example a Bitcoin price, right? That is a Bitcoin API that is available. So uh, you can either take it offline. Bitcoin API is available in real time, and there are some APIs that provide real time stock information. You can also tap onto that one and get it real time and put it into Kafka as well, right? So there are multiple uh, ways. Uh, you can do it. Uh, there's this one question. Uh, will I be able to use TensorFlow using Python with the same effectiveness? Will you be able to TensorFlow? I I have not experimented about it like with the same architecture, how much accuracy. I think it would be the same. I would definitely say it would be the same because it depends on uh, like it, 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 it's all about the model weights that are being trained, not the package that or the uh, or like whether we are using a JavaScript or in Python, so it would be the same the performance. Yeah, and and uh, again, right? Uh, uh, Python also has a Kafka connector. It has a MongoDB connector. Everything. Yeah, you can yeah, yeah. Do it. yeah the, the, the best thing I think like your it's more uh, server side. <coughs> you are coupling it. You are creating like socket connection. It's a one way of doing it. You can use your language that you are comfortable with as well right again it's a server side code uh, it can be a python code also running and websocket and then streaming the data it can be anything according to me uh, so i again like you are getting a lot of things a uh, lot of uh, uh, appreciation uh, victor great work victor may i know you are actually predicting what in terms of stock uh, I feel it's just an example. A stock market cannot be predicted by the stock price alone. But I would say look yeah, at yeah. the architecture, look at the different components, how it is glued together. Uh, go ahead, uh, Victor. Um, yeah, definitely. Actually, the actually here the stock market is means the entire prediction is actually a time series model. So what is this time series model? Suppose I say one, two, three, four, five, you have to predict the sixth. The entire series from the entire series, you have to predict the sixth or after six. A seven, eight, what would be the term? Nine. So this prediction like this, the time series works. So it could be uh, it could be any of the parameters that is in like a time series format or like a time series, uh, like a structure in a time series way. All right. I mean, in I mean, in, in, uh, just I said that one, two, three, means you can see that there is a series formatting here or a way uh, means it is representing a series actually. So anything that would represent a series would actually be used for prediction. Here I have used open, um, uh, open as the as the base for the prediction. You can use it uh, in terms of other other like uh, I mean attributes also. Like I have used open as the base attribute. Like in terms of other attributes, which would be a time series, you can use it for prediction. Okay. Got it. I think, yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Extremely informative session. There are, again, thanks, Victor. Uh, I think there's a final question. Let's take this one uh, before you wrap it up. 
Um, this from Asta just came in. What are the advantage of JavaScript over Python other than JS is faster than ML? See, I would See, say it's a go ahead, Victor. Yeah, yeah, you say it first. I said it's a, just a need based, right? It is not really this is better or that is better. When yeah, you are exactly, exactly. In a web page, right? Uh, I cannot directly uh, embed and Python within a web page unless I create that API architecture. But here in JS, I can. I can just have it uh, directly embedded within web page with an uh, Angular JS code or Node.js <laughs> code or even Node.js directly embedded to it. So TensorFlow.js was created for that purpose to enable like uh, a web application, uh, TensorFlow uh, run within web application. Yeah, definitely. definitely. My views would be the same. Well. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's it, uh, uh, Victor. Thank you very much again. And thank you for the thank informative you. session. Moreover, thank you for sharing the experience because uh, uh, see, I can go and talk about like what an uh, aspiring data scientist must do. I'm, I'm talking, I, I'm not the one who has experienced the current market. So I experienced the market some time back, but I have graduated technology and I've been in the industry, but coming from you directly on how you navigated it, definitely going to be inspiring for many. Uh, thank you very much, Victor. Thank you thank for, you for welcoming me too. Yeah. yeah, it was really a great session. Thank you.